Dave Schofield. And Dave, hard to believe it, but soccer season is here. This is the MetLife Game of the Week. It must be a big one. Well, MetLife tries to sponsor the, the finest uh, college soccer match of the week, and I think they've done it this time. This is going to be a great match. We've got two fine teams, and of course, Monmouth College off to a, a tough start. 0-0 to Lehigh in their first game. They played well, but Joe Donahue really not happy with the outcome of that game. Uh, it has to be a little disappointing. Uh, they outplayed Lehigh. They had a uh, number of opportunities to score, couldn't put the ball on the net, and that's the name of the game. They didn't do it. They'd like to overcome that today and give Rutgers a good shot. Well, the Hawks are very optimistic this year, and in order to do well, really, Mark Wilson, one of their leading goal scorers from Manchester High School, must play well. M Mark's a sophomore out of Manchester High School, and, and he's strong, he's fast, and better than that, showed an ability last year to score goals. That's what they need. And, of course, Rutgers under Bob Riasso has built a tremendous program. They opened their season on a positive note, a 3 to nothing victory over the University of Maine. They're ranked number 17th nationally. They have Bobby Joe Esposito from Riverside High School. Uh, Bob was telling me earlier today they have never lost a game in which Bo uh, Bobby Joe has scored. And, of course, the two coaches, Joe Donahue and Bob Riasso, not only rivals in the, on the soccer field, but they're great friends. This could be very interesting. Could be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, we're looking forward to a great way to kick off our soccer season this year. Stay with us. We'll be back with the kickoff right after this. to Monmouth College for college soccer right here on TV 34. It's the Rutgers Scarlet Knights set to take on the home Monmouth College Hawks and on a very windy day here in West Long Branch, New Jersey. Bob Lampin and then Dave Schofield here. And Dave, we mentioned that we've got two quality teams as you take a look at the captains and the officials at midfield. And not only are they good, good teams, good players, but the facilities here at Monmouth really outstanding. Great field. The pitch is in beautiful shape, Bob. I walked around on it before you got here and uh, I was here this summer seeing some of the uh, All-American soccer camp that was going on and walked out here in the field. Seemed to be in pretty bad shape, but they've really done a great job with it this year. Our officials today, as you just saw, Ken Andrus will be in the middle on the lines. It'll be Vince Giraldi and Bill Carroll. Rutgers with a record of one win and no defeats, a three to nothing victory over Maine. And Monmouth at 0-0 and one, and we'll set the starting lineups for you. There they are right there. All right, for the Hawks of Monmouth College, at, in the back we've got Davey Pellin, Paul Halleck, Bob Olat, and John Russo will be the sweeper. Mom is playing a 4-4-2 today. So in the midfield, we've got Len Turi, Nick Sacco, Brad Bleefeld, who redshirted last year, Mark Niminski, and up front, two speedsters, Rusty Aronson and leading scorer Mark Wilson. And a lot of short players on that team. And that's right. They're all there. And for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers, in goal, Joel DeMorit. In the back, Glenn Carbonaro, Jim DeMarco, Tyler Isaacson, and Javier Velasquez. In the midfield for Rutgers, Mark Edelstein, Daryl Edelstein, Chris Sharkey. Up front, Bobby Joe Esposito, their leading scorer. Mark Ozerowski and Peter Vermes. Okay, and you can probably hear the wind whipping in our microphones. That could be a factor in the match. Uh, it's a crosswind, Bob. And you, on the screen there, you just saw Rich Feinberg, who came out of retirement and as a walk-on for Monmouth, uh, shut out Lehigh in their nothing-nothing tie. Uh, the fellow you see running off there is Rich Feinberg. He played two years ago. He sat out last year. He came on as a walk-on this year when Joe Donahue needed a man to fill in and goal for the injured Mark Zabilowitz. Uh, Rich also is a, a part-time assistant with the women's team, or was. It looks like he's going to make a career out of soccer <laughs> again here. Gave up the coaching togs for the uh, padded sh uh, elbows again. They always said that goalkeepers aren't always the smartest guys in the world, and... Uh, He's going right back, going to take it easy as a coach, right back into the fire on the field. The ozone material. <laughs> well, that's the visiting Rutgers team right there. They'll be wearing the the uh, red shirts. I guess you'd have to call them scarlet. Yes, we better call them and scarlet shirts. of course, shirts. Monmouth will be wearing their home whites. Bob Riasso, the head coach. And Bob Riasso uh, has really done quite a job as the head man at Rutgers University. The last three years, Bob, Rutgers has been in the top 20 preseason and finished up two of those years in the top 10. They're ranked number 17 in the nation right now. Um, their last win was uh, Bob Riasso's 60th win as Rutgers coach. He's, he's got a fine record. He's a good coach, does a fine job recruiting, does a better job on the field. And he's just starting his sixth year. And before Bob took over, uh, the talk around the country in soccer was what's wrong with Rutgers. For years and years, Rutgers was really... Uh, not a power at all, and yet we had New Jersey players and it pretty much known throughout the country that this is the top area, this in St. Louis, New Jersey-St. Louis, in terms of high school soccer talent. Uh, 
Soccer America did an article about the, the hotbeds of, of high school and youth soccer in the country. The Jersey Shore, Mercer County, there's Joe Dunne, who, who really believes that Jersey Shore is a, a hotbed of soccer. That's where he does all, if not most, if not all of his recruiting. Soccer America saw the Jersey Shore as probably the second or third hottest bed of soccer in, in America. Well, as we look down the Monmouth roster, it's it's covered with Shore area players. Zabilowitz from Belmar and Pellin from Freehold. Halleck from Spring Lake, Hammondike from Beechwood, Bleafield and Terry from Ocean Township, Sacco from Tinton Falls, and we'll mention a, a couple of others as the match goes on. There's Big Joe, of course, Joe Donahue out of East Strasburg State College, what came down as, at the time, I think the youngest high school head soccer coach in New Jersey, 21 years old. Joe was named the head man at St. Rose, and there's Bob Riasso. Good look at Bobby, the head man at Rutgers. Bob had an outstanding high school coaching career at Willingboro. So uh, we've got two local coaches, really New Jersey guys, who have done very well, and it's good to see. Good territorial kind of uh, difference here. Bobby from down in South Jersey, Joe from up in North Jersey, and meeting for a big one here at the Shore today. Okay, so it'll be Rutgers kicking it off. There's Mark Zabilowitz, the Monmouth College goalkeeper. Mark was injured earlier this year, also injured last year, back in the nets today. And we're underway, and you'll see both teams are going to try to keep the ball down on the ground. Right away, it's taken away by number 18. And that's Mark Wilson from Manchester. And Mama's going to look to put some pressure on early. Well, Joe said they were not going to hang back. Joe said they were going, not going to go into any kind of defensive posture. They are going to take it right at Rutgers. And I think that's what they have to do. So right away, it's a corner kick. So Mama's not wasting any time. And here it comes, and just deflected out. A hard shot, just wide. Nicely taken, though, by number four, Paul Halleck, coming up from his defender's position. Well, tell you, well positioned out there on that one was Paul Halleck. Uh, the defender has to stay out there on the corner of the box and just hammer it home if it misses everybody inside. The corner kick was well taken, just missed. Halleck put a foot to it and came close. But no damage, so it'll be a goal kick for Rutgers, taken by DeMorat. And that's going to be a foul called against Dave Pellin in the middle. It'll be a free kick for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Game just underway. And finally, the pressure defense almost pays off, but Rutgers comes away with it. And that shot taken by number 13. That was Chris Sharkey and Zabilowitz with his first save of the match. So obviously both teams looking for some offense coming out here, firing. And Davey Pellin and Bobby Olad have their work cut out for them today with Esposito and Vermis. Esposito number nine, and here comes, this is Monmouth on the attack. That's number 15, Bob Olad. Isaacson. Esposito, turn, nice shield by Vermes. They're going to call a hold against Mark Edelstein. Got the arm up a little bit, Bob, and just kind of shielded him with the arm and pushed a bit. So he, Mark Dominski got the call there. Oh, good call. He, to get the ball, he had to hook around from the rear. So the free kick will be taken by number 15. That's Bob Olot from Point Pleasant. He goes up the left flank. Russo, taking away up, 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 constant pressure. Vermes and Bobby Joe Esposito, the kind of guys that love to score goals, and they'll keep putting the pressure on the defenders. Defenders are not going to be able to rest for a moment here today, Bob, especially Mama's back, back two, the two I mentioned. Carbonara on the far side. They have to play it all the way back, bring it back across. Smart play. Sometimes you, it helps you to bring it back and start your attack over again. They finally go all the way back to the Marat, the goalkeeper from Millville. And it'll be a throw in for the Monmouth Hawks. Seems to be a lot of uh, 
long ball attitude on the part of the Hawks today, trying to loosen things up with some long balls out to the wing, trying to spread the Rutgers defense out a bit. And that's going to be a foul against Rutgers. Chris Sharkey was on the attack, and Rutgers, the uh, kind of team, they could be dangerous because in their defense, counting their back four and their midfield, something like seven of the players are actually midfielders, their natural position. So you know that those defenders, even though they're in the back, they're going to look to come out and they're going to have good ball skills. They're attacking They're attacking soccer players, and, and Bob Riasso moved them back this year to, to play defense, but you know they're going to be moving up. The pass was intended for Ozerowski. Ran into touch, so it'll be a throw in for Monmouth. First half, 40 minutes and 40 seconds remaining. And again, they go back. Had one good shot in the match for Monmouth that was taken by Halleck and one shot taken by Rutgers, and that's been it. No score. They don't want to let him turn. Just shielding the ball. That's number four, Edelstein. Finally, they go back with it. And watch out here. Russo up high to knock it away. A lot. Here's where your small-sided games come in, Andy. You got to get the ball out of trouble like that. Patiently played by Ola. Very nicely done. Well, Burmese tried to just touch it onto the foot of Esposito, but Zabilowitz off the line. Mark Zabilowitz out of Belmar. You could see it when he was in high school, uh, an outstanding keeper. At the time, he was very small. Since that point, though, he has really physically matured, and he's got good size for a keeper now. He's got very good size. He's very acrobatic. He jumps well. He's not. He's fearless. He's got a good foot on the punt, and he's got a good arm for the throw. He, he's matured into a fine goalkeeper, Bob. A lot. And they're really bundling up. Monmouth playing 4-4-2. Rutgers sending about seven guys into the midfield. And they're really going to have to use the width of the field to get much happening. It, 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 it appears that that's what Monmouth <coughs> wants to do. They're playing long balls wide and looking to have Aronson and Wilson run on to them. Well, Coach Donahue has mentioned that he wants to have a very strong defense. He feels that he will be defensively oriented. And he de he's going to have to, as you said, depend on the speed of Wilson and uh, Aronson up front. This is Halleck. Esposito. Overlapping right side. That's number four, Edelstein. Cuts it back. Header knocked down and just cleared away. Shot over the top. So there's a nice attack. Very nice play in there by Johnny Russo and Dave Pellin. John Russo, talk about experience. John Russo has matured as a sweeper back there this year. Gained a lot of experience last year, and he's become very patient. Very patient, he, and he works the ball himself, finds his teammates. We're going to take another look at it here. Edelstein, a great run up the right side. Yeah, you notice on there that Russo didn't try to hammer it out of there. He just touched it right off, touched it right off, and then... They were fortunate on that shot going long. This is Wilson on the run. Still has it. Mark Wilson beats one, beats two, and he's taken down. And let's see where they put it. Looks like they're pointing to the spot. Looks it like is a penalty kick. Got a PK here. He was taken down hard, Bob. I, I, I can't see that far, but it, he was taken down hard. I believe it was a penalty. Wilson went down the left side. Beat one defender, went at the next one, threw a little shoulder fake, went past him, was on the run, just inside the box. They took him down, and Wilson looks like he's shaking up. There's that speed coming into play, the speed and the strength. Uh, he, he, wouldn't be, he wouldn't be knocked off the ball, and he just pushed it right past and ran on. But he's, he's in a little pain out there. He's hurt. Wilson, a sophomore from Manchester. Came on the scene last year as a freshman, Dave, and uh, really surprised a lot of people. I think he surprised everybody but Joe Donahue. <laughs> Joe knew exactly what, what the young man could do, and, and he uh, sent him out there to do it, and he did it. There were, had been, I know that when he was playing in high school, he was an outstanding scorer, and there was some question, some comments made about the schedule that Manchester played, and they didn't think that his style would, would uh, necessarily succeed in college. They didn't think he was skilled enough. His skill level has gone up, and he is super quick. Well, his skill level has gone up, but a man who can put the ball in the back of the net is a man who can put the ball in the back of That's the net, right. regardless of where he plays. Not something you can teach. Here comes the penalty kick. Number 22, 
Greg Bajek from Clifton will take it. And he'll await the whistle. Here it is. Off the bar. Oh. Uh, I don't believe it. They missed it. Unlucky. That really has to hurt. That's got to take it out of you. Shot was well taken, Bob. He hit it right where he had to hit it. Just hit it a little too far to the left. Banged off the post. Cleared away by Rutgers. So it'll be a corner kick. Uh, under normal circumstances, you're not unhappy with a corner. But in, in this case, this is the type of uh, up in the air on a corner. Down in front. Here and they come right back. That's got to be a tremendous lift. Tremendous well, lift for the Hawks. You're not kidding, because I was just going to say what you see happen so often. If you miss a penalty, the other team will take the momentum and come right back. And this time, Monmouth showed their courage. They, they missed the penalty, came back, and scored on the corner. Well taken corner kick. They kept the ball in the area. Somebody got a foot on the loose ball, and there you have it. Not sure who they gave credit Nor am I. for the goal. I think it may have been number seven, Vlad Bleefeld, but we'll have to wait. The official, here it is. Check that, it was number eight, Len Turry. Len Turry, a defender out of Ocean, and Monmouth leads it one to nothing. Len, there's a handball in there, Bob. Len was a questionable starter before. Here comes that, here comes that corner kick again. On the replay. Kept in, and Turry just picked up the loose ball off of one other foot and knocked it home. An opportunistic goal for Len Turry out of Ocean Township. As I said, he was a questionable starter before the game. He's no question anymore, Bob. <laughs> That's right. He's in the book. Rutgers looking to equalize now. Remember, Rutgers ranked, what is it, 17th in the United States, and they trail at one to nothing. Mammoth in their home opener. Esposito takes it away. Esposito with the ball. Aronson just hopped over his foot. Oh, good touch by Aronson on a weak pass from number 22, Bajek. Bob, the ball is bouncing well for the Hawks today. A little thanks to Joe Zadalis from the Asbury Park Press for helping us out on that goal. He was down closer, could see it, and gave us the information we needed. Came back, gave us the name of that goal scorer. That was Len Turry. Bleefeld, Vermes, Esposito with the left foot is blocked. Rutgers really pushing him into the attack. Russo knocked it down, cleared up field. Carbonara. Looks as though the, the attitude of the Hawks may have changed just a bit here. They seem to be packing it in in the back a little more, Bob. Well, they're going to have to bring everyone back to defend. With 35 minutes left to go in the first half, a little bit early to start trying to hold on to a one-goal lead. 2 45-minute halves. And Monmouth leading it one to nothing in the MetLife College Soccer Match of the Week. MetLife got involved last year, and uh, they really added quite a bit to the college soccer scene. I believe they're sponsoring the tournament up at Rutgers this year, the, the what is it, six or eight team tournament they have. And it goes out of bounds. People crying for some calls. Joe Donahue yells to his players, stop refereeing and play. Joe's finally learned that it really doesn't matter what you say or do out there. Refereeing is something that you can't do anything about. You just have to go out and maintain your composure. Dave Pellin was credited with the assist on the corner. Here's Esposito on the run. Angles right, goes far post. Zabilowicz gathers it in. There's that acrobatic save by Mark Zabilowicz. He cut down the angle. Esposito tried to cut it back to the far post. Mark just smothered it. I think had Esposito gotten a little more of it, it might have gotten past Zabilowicz, because Zabilowicz had to reach back for it. It, it was past him. It's a good thought. Of course, going at that angle, away from the goal, it's tough to turn and fire. And Curry knocks it up the left wing. But nobody home. Rutgers now in possession. Our opening soccer match of the fall. What a great day for it, too, Bob. Sure doesn't feel like September. Nice and cool, no humidity, a great day to play. 
a little bit of, of a win factor, but the way these teams are playing, they're trying to keep it down. You see this short passing there, and of course, then he knocks course, it up high. As you say, short passing there goes to the moon. But the win, not too much of a factor yet. Some contact there between Bleefeld and Ozerowski. Bleefeld got the worst of that one. I think you're going to see some contact today, Bob. There's a little Jersey pride at stake here. <laughs> Vermes, nice ball up the right side, overlapping. It's Edelstein, knocks it across. A little too much. A little too much is right. Running onto it was Daryl Edelstein. Is that Daryl and his brother Daryl? It's Daryl Edelstein, number 16, and number four is Mark Edelstein. And they are brothers. <laughs> Don't get me going on, uh, <laughs> on those name things. I'm not even going to bite at that one. My brother, Daryl. These kids are working hard. Esposito, you can see his strength. And that's going to be a foul. It will go against number 19, Mark Neminski from Stanhope. This could be a very dangerous ball here, Bob. Coach Riasso felt that there was a little uh, premeditation in that tackle, and uh, a yellow card should have been given to Neminski, but very often they're doing that just to try to plant the seed. Here comes a free kick. Watch out. Knocked down right in front. That's dangerous, and they clear it away. Any restart from that area of the field makes me very, very nervous, Bob. Isaacson. Vermes cuts it back again. Esposito. Shot. No. Nope. Nice move. Oh, Zabilowicz, what a reaction save. Look at this. Oh, I don't believe it. That ball was past him. He didn't see it. He sensed it was there. The man wants the ball in that 18-yard box, Bob. And, and he generally gets it. It's a great play by Mark Zabilowicz. Somehow, Rutgers not able to get off a hard shot from that distance. Zabilowicz was beaten. Tyler! Uh, cleared long up the field. That's Russo. All right, here's Mark Zabilowicz again. The ball goes in. Cut back nicely here. Not cleared by the defenders. A little little move by number 13 there. It's missed by a defen defender. Mark Zabilowicz sees the ball, pulls it in, loses it a little bit, grabs it with his legs, makes a save. Chris Sharkey took there the he shot. Is. There's Zabilowicz. Somehow his defender fanned on it. I don't know how Zabilowicz knew that ball was going to be missed and he made that save. That was something. It's that sixth ozone sense that goalkeepers have. The Mammoth Hawks dodged the bullet there. They still lead it one to nothing, but Rutgers the last five minutes or so has really been threatening. One of the guys doing most of the damage is right there, number nine with the ball, Bobby Joe Esposito from Riverside High School. Vermes took the shot, but it was rejected by Pellin. Blocked beautifully by Davey Pellin. Showing a lot of courage getting in the way of a shot like that. Dave Pellin from Freehold, New Jersey. And it'll be a throw-in far side by Daryl Edelstein. No, nope, they're going to leave it for Chris Sharkey from Penn Saucon. And they're going to go with the long one. A few years ago, coaches used to put their noses up in the air at the long throw. All of a sudden, everybody's doing it. Gentlemen, you can't stand. we got to get active in that fight. And they'll get another throw as it was cleared out by Nicky Sacco. Coach Bob Riasso calling for the Scarlet Knights to get active in the box. Long throw, headed away. Lenny, take it up. <laughs> Vermees again. And he's taken down. This time the foul against Len Turry. Peter Vermes, number 10, and Esposito, uh, Dave, not only great scores, but very active. They, they check back for the ball, let people overlap them. Very da effective. Dangerous with or without the ball. A little lack of communication on the part of Bobby Olot and Mark Zabilowicz there. Somebody wasn't listening to someone. 
I think that's one uh, one area that some of the younger players really could take stock in the forwards. Very often your forwards don't realize that they can be more dangerous coming back, getting out of the way, rather than trying to receive the ball all the time in a goal-scoring position. Soccer's a game of space. It's a game of, of filling space and clearing space. And if you clear it, somebody else can fill it and get the defense all turned around. On the run is number 16, Mike Weber. Aronson straight up. There's some contact there. Aronson shaking up as he was hammered by Mark Edelstein. A little scissors lock put on him there. Rusty Aronson. That's Edelstein right there. Made that hard tackle on Aronson. And the Hawks will have the free kick. It'll be taken by number 15, Bobby Olat. And he's just going to play it over to Zabilowitz. Mark will take his time. 27-15 left in the half. And so far, Rutgers controlling the action. But where it matters on the scoreboard, Monmouth leads it one to nothing on a penalty kick taken by Len Turry at eight minutes into the match. Check that, the penalty kick was missed and then they got the corner kick. A pushing and foul. knocked it in. Excuse me, Bob, a little pushing foul on number 19, Mark Neminski there. Mark is a rugged defender. Uh, he'll get those fouls sometimes during the game. And the foul's starting to mount up. And dangerous fouls for the Hawks down here at this end of the field. And if the fouls are committed early, you know it only gets worse later on generally. So the pressure on the, the man in the middle, Ken Andrus, the referee, and he's trying to control things and so far doing a good job doing of it. Doing a very good job of it. This this is a dangerous situation here for the Hawks. He's going to dummy over oh. it and knock it across. Nothing there. And that shot taken, and it goes wide. That'll be a goal kick for the Monmouth Hawks. Nothing done by accident on that one, but both those fellows knew what they were doing when they let that ball go. It was the third fellow that didn't quite get into it. Monmouth with two substitutions, Mike Lamantina, number 12, along with number six, Paul Hammadike, into the match. Amadike out of Beechwood, New Jersey. Tom's River. And Lamatina yep. from Raritan High School, resident of Hazlitt. I have a real problem when Hamadike and Halleck are on the field together. Yeah. <laughs> Two blonde headed guys. Same size. Similar name, right. same size. Same first name. One's number four, one's number six. It's Coach Joe Donnie who has no problem with having the two of them on the field at the same time. Strengthens his club. Both great players, both active, aggressive players. There's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Take a choice. That was Paul. 25 minutes to go in the half. Len Turry assisted by Dave Pellin. For Monmouth, that's the only score in the match. It's one to nothing. Fabriasso's Rutgers Scarlet Knights trailing it. Rutgers number 17 ranked team in the United States. Mentioned on the, the opening that Rutgers has never lost a game in which Bobby Joe Esposito has scored. So I guess the secret is either to stop Bobby Joe, get him, get him out of the scoring somehow. Well, Esposito has had one or two chances today so far has been shut out, but we have a long ways to go. There's that wind coming into into <laughs> Just took into it away. Effect. Just blew that ball right out of it. There's Rusty Aronson, Rust, number 14. Rusty Aronson was uh, one of the leading scorers on the Hawks last year after moving up from goalkeeper the year before. Well, you had mentioned Esposito. 20, that's unbelievable. 26 games they've won when he's scored. They haven't lost any. Not lost one where he scored. You look at the Rutgers schedule, and I'll tell you, they've got a strong schedule. University of Virginia currently ranked number nine, Penn State number 10, North Carolina State, Fairleigh Dickinson always has a great team, University of Connecticut. So they go out and play the big boys. They're playing North Carolina State this year with another New Jersey boy on there, Chris Pete and Pab Ramos both play for North Carolina State. Breaking down the left side. 
And there he is, Di Marat with the save. Down the left side was number nine, Nicky Sacco. Touched it out in front of the goal nicely with his right foot off the left side of the field. Just didn't get it far enough out in front, and there was nobody home when he did. DeMort came right off the line, smothered it. So again, they congregate in midfield. That time, the charge called against Rutgers. 22.49 to go. And it'll be a free kick for the Hawks. Number 20, John Russo. Tees it up nicely. Spends a little time doing it too, Bob. But he teed it up for Bob Olot. Olot actually will take it. Mammoth running off the ball. They chip into the box. And the wind takes it a little bit. There's Halleck. And he gives that one away over the end line. So it'll be a goal kick for Rutgers and a substitution coming on for the Monmouth Hawks. It'll be number 10, Tom McDonald. McDonald, a midfielder from Mawa, New Jersey. McDonald made an impact last year, Bob, with his uh, uh, aggressive, uh, hard-nosed style of soccer that he came in here and played as a freshman. He, he earned a lot of respect of the opposition and his teammates, so he'll see some playing time this year as a sophomore. I look down the uh, Monmouth roster, Dave, and not one person on the team from out of state as Rutgers looks to equalize. Velazquez, Javier Velazquez, and it's taken away. And now the Hawks look to build. Sacco gave it away. Sharkey, Esposito, nice run by Sharkey in the box. Abilowitz got a hand on it. Nice clear it away. Nicely saved. Remember, yeah. Bob, when we used to look down the roster and see how many fellows came from out of the country? That's right. Now we're looking down to see how many come from out of New Jersey. And there's none, none on this Mama team, and I think only three on the Rutgers team from out of the state. You've got uh, Ozerowski from the Chamonix, Pennsylvania. Let's see if we can find any others here. John Mitchell and Jim DeMarco from Hicksville, New York, out on the island. And that's it. The island, as they say. <laughs> Free kick, Russo to take it. Mammoth really takes their time on the free kicks. Of course, they're ahead by a goal. They want to make sure that everybody's set up. Conversely, gives the defense a chance to mark up. Well, it's Rutgers' time. They can spend it foolishly if they want. And that one goes into touch, so it'll be a Hawk throw in. The intensity of the game here, Bob, has, has slowed down just a bit. I think some of the fellows are getting a little bit tired uh, settling into the kind of game that they think they're going to have to play for the next 45 minutes. Long throw taken by Paul Halleck. And Bob Riazzo on the bench for the Rutgers team. His team trailing at one to nothing. And hopefully you'll get a chance to speak to Bobby right at the end of the first half. Yes, Bob, we're going to speak to both coaches briefly at the end of the half and uh, get their views of the first half. That can be dangerous, you know, grabbing the guy as soon as the whistle ends at the half. There might be some emotion there that uh, you might not want to hear, but we'll see how the coaches do. And they'll let that one roll over the end line. How'd you like to grab a guy like Woody Hayes right at the end of the first half? I think Woody would probably grab you first. I don't think that would be a problem. <laughs> No problem with Bob Riasso and Joe Donahue, though. Rutgers with a substitution. Number five, Chris Bronkley in. Bronkley from Pinebrook, New Jersey. He's a midfielder. Whereas number five. And Mark Zabilowitz will take the goal kick. Didn't hit it real well. Esposito. Let's go with a quick shot. Zabilowitz again roaming far and wide. It's like a second sweeper back there, Bob. There he is, number five, just into the game. Chris Brockley involved in that one right away as he was knocked down by Zabilowitz. Felt it, too. Yeah. So it'll be a throw in, but they've got the long one. It can be dangerous. This time they go a little shorter. I'm a bit surprised, Bob, that Rutgers is trying to force everything into the middle. They're really not using their wings well yet. I'm surprised that they haven't uh, 
Haven't tried, got a corner kick here. Haven't tried to exploit the wings a little more. Well, where they've been dangerous is when they've withdrawn their forwards and had the outside midfielder overlap on, on either flank, and they've had some good opportunities that way, which is really another way to use your wings, provided your forwards withdraw. Here comes the corner, in swinger. Oh, well done, Michael Lamatina. Oh, sweet. Lamatina with some good work. Finally, can't quite catch up to it as it, as it goes into touch, so it'll be a throw in for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, number 13, Chris Sharkey to take it. Mike Lamatina is the kind of player you like to have on the field in a situation like this. He's calm, he's cool, he doesn't make a lot of crazy mistakes, he's well skilled. Nice volley by Lamatina there with the left foot. Wind really becoming a factor in the last couple of minutes, the ball up in the air more, and it's making the quality of play drop a level or two, I think. That was not the wind. <laughs> no, no, that was inexperience, I believe, and new man in the game is what caused that. The ball bounced up a little bit, and he uh, just lost it between his feet. Tom McDonald lost it. Sharkey to take the throw. 17 minutes to go. Long throw in the box. And a push called against Rutgers inside that 18-yard area. A little push on Peter Vermes there. There's Peter Vermes. Got an injured left hand, it looks like, a wrist. Well, he's got he's got great size, doesn't he? Ooh. Big, strong, quick forward. Good short skills, too. Uh, he looks like a natural indoor player, doesn't he, Bob? Yeah, he does. Maybe he needs an agent. Maybe I can get over and talk to him. <laughs> Don't money. even mention agents, NCAA college <laughs> soccer, please. <laughs> this is the MetLife game of the week, and it's a good one so far. Rutgers and Monmouth. Monmouth leading it one to nothing. Len Turry with the only goal in the match. Zabilowitz shows no fear. None at all. None at all. What a sparkling game that boy is having today, Bob. Coming back from an injury, and there he is, Mark Zabilowitz. Coming back from an injury and just taking over that 18, he daring, defying people to come in there and bother him. Well, he's made two saves today that have been unbelievable just in terms of reaction, where you really couldn't see the ball. Neither shot hard. One time the defender, his own defender, fanned on it, almost got past him, and something told him to get down there, and he made the save. He's been great. It's a pleasure to watch a game where you've got a goalkeeper that's that acrobatic and that courageous and gets enough chances to do that kind of thing. It's not good for the coach that this goalie gets that many chances to do it. Roll with him, Ernie! Russo takes it, cleared out by Sharkey. And Esposito pokes it into touch. We've got Mark Wilson back in the game, Bob. Well, of course, Mark was taken down early. A penalty kick was called, and Wilson was shaken up. And they need the quickness uh, of Wilson out there. Without that, they really don't have too much of an attack. There's an example of what I've talked about, the calmness of John Russo this year. He, he didn't just kick it away, took it himself to the touchline, got away from him, but uh, well thought out play on the part of John Russo. There. Brockley tried to go through three. Wilson came away with it. That's a two on seven build up. Two Mammoth against six or seven Rutgers. The odds are not in your favor. No, I think they I think they're packing it up pretty good here. And I think that'll be a corner. We've got Rusty Aronson and Mark Naminsky coming back in the game here. Lenny Turi and number 22, Greg Bajek are going out. Greg Bajek came in when uh, Mark Wilson got hurt, took the penalty kick and missed it. Rutgers with the corner, very dangerous on the last one. Again, they go with the in-swinger, far post, everybody up in the air, and it'll be another corner. Well cleared out. I don't know if that was by uh, Russo or Mark Zabilowitz himself there. But well cleared over the, over the bar. Carbonero was well up on that corner for Rutgers. And Rutgers with a substitution. Benny Letson from East Brunswick checks in. Of course, Letson was the talk of the high school soccer uh, circles last year. Had a great year at East Brunswick. Had an opportunity to see him play against Neptune in the uh, sectional finals down there. Good player. Very good player. 
And that should be a goal kick as it was cleared away by Mark Edelstein. There's Mark number four. 13-10 remaining, opening half. Monmouth one, Rutgers nothing. So far, Rutgers with eight shots. Monmouth with three. Sibilowicz with five saves and only one save for DeMorat. Taken away by Edelstein. He's pretty well hemmed in on the sideline, though. Uh, the Rutgers players show some good skills over there on the sideline. Just didn't get any help from each other. Bought, him some bought himself some time, actually, with one or two stepovers. And arriving late to support was Tyler Isaacson. So Sharkey with another long throw. Zabilowitz unmolested on that one, really. No problem. That long throw, you've got to be careful. The keeper comes out, they get a gust of wind, and it's over his head. That header hurt. Aronson down on one knee, and it just kind of smacked him and drilled him into the ground. Kind of misjudged that Ooh. one and uh, hit him coming down. Oh, that hurt. It'll part your hair a different way, won't it? Anytime time you head those punch, you like to have a, a, at least get your feet off the ground an inch or two so you have somewhere to go when it knocks you down. Well cleared by Tommy McDonald there, Bob. Good slide tackle by Tom. And oh, that's there's good, some contact. Good hip check by Tom. That's the aggressive play you were talking about. He didn't have a prayer for that ball. There's the overlap, a mistake. Tyler Isaacson right in front, and it goes over the bar. Esposito right in front. I said it before, Bob, the ball is bouncing very well for the Hawks today. Rutgers clearly in control in terms of offensive attack, but they still trail it one to nothing with 11-10 to go in the opening half. There's Bobby Joe Esposito right there. He has that knack, even when everyone thinks that he's marked, of just finding that opening and getting a foot on the ball. He's a sneaky goal scorer, Bob. He can score goals. He can't relax for a minute with a man like that on the field. And he's got those quick feet, something you can't teach. He gets a shot off so quickly where you see a lot of guys, it takes him a half a second or so to get all set. Boom, wherever he is, he takes it. Well, Bobby doesn't care what part of his body he scores a goal with. Good point. He'll knock it in with his knee if he has to. The ball will go in the net. Nice little move by uh, Rusty Aronson there. Aronson doing a dance in the midfield. Finally plays it out wide. Wilson, he's being marked by number two, Carbonara. Comes out in front. Somehow they managed to get the ball crossed, but nothing happens. What you had was a series of two or three little one-on-one -on -one games there, Bob. Lee Felt plays it back. This is Russo. And you can see both teams really back in the midfield. Now, finally, Rutgers breaks away up the right flank. Benny Letson, he's being chased by Carbonara, comes across. Aronson taken away. Isaacson. Isaacson. Oh, he almost tried to sneak it to that far post. Took it well. Tyler Isaacson from Short Hills, New Jersey, coming up from his defender's position. Right back, moving up into the offense. I think this is what Bob Riasso has in mind with, with those fellows he has playing back there, Bob. He wants them to move up into the offense. He wants them to take shots from 18, 19, 20 yards out. Well, with good reason, as we mentioned, Almost all of the backs for Rutgers are converted midfielders, so they've all played in the midfield, and they have that natural midfielder's attacking instinct. You like to take advantage of that. Right, and they've scored goals. They know it's fun. Yeah, it sure is, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. I fun. wouldn't know, but I, I wouldn't either. <laughs> <laughs> A lot they, of my friends told me yeah, it's fun. Yeah, they tell though. me it's fun, right. It was a lot of fun for me in college. A couple of rare occurrences that had happened. I partied for weeks. Well. This is such a good game. I'm not going to let you tell us about those stories right now. <laughs> and here's a little more buildup by Rutgers. They started all the way in defense. Nice run there by Javier Velazquez, but it's taken away. Isaacson. Aronson tripped up. 
Bob, I think Monmouth is just not allowing Rutgers to build the, build the game up the way they'd like to. Carbonara. And this is the goalkeeper, Joe DeMorat from Millville, New Jersey. Well, there's one one tactic or one uh, basic fundamental really that I see, Dave, that Mammoth is really well schooled in. And you can tell that it, Joe's worked with his kids and not letting a guy turn. They'll check back for the ball, but he doesn't really want to let them turn back to the uh, attacking area. Great shot, good move by number 13, Chris Sharkey, but it went wide. That's a good point, Bob, and a lot of that, a lot of credit for that, I believe, goes to uh, assistant coach Jim Harrison, who's out here. I see him out here almost every day working with individual players on marking, on uh, on sticking to a player and really sticking in and marking well. So a lot of the credit goes to people like Jim Harrison and Bob Graney and Greg McConnell, Joe's assistants, and, of course, Joe himself, who has done just a marvelous job out here. Well, you just saw the score, one to nothing. Here comes the corner kick. Edelstein takes it and cleared out of there. Well Nikki Saka went to deflect it out. And this is Aronson. Aronson's taken his lick so far today. He's been tripped up four or five times. DeMarco. And on the left side, that's Chris Brockley. And he tries to cut it back, but goes near, near post. Zabilowitz beats Esposito to it. Quick release. La Matina, plenty of time, 6.40 to go in the half, and now they're going to close them down. They take it away. Once again, Edelstein, good ball, but nobody there. Just a little bit off the mark for Esposito, but a great ball. Edelstein, I think, actually looking for an overlapping midfielder on the left side of the box. Had he been there, could have been a goal. That's a great ball by Mark Wilson. And a great, a great tackle by Mark Naminski. Stays with it. And knocks it over the end line. It's a nice bit of soccer there by Wilson and Naminski. Naminski running up from his left back spot, or his left half back spot there. Both teams physically strong. They can keep the ball down and play a little keep, and they also can go right at you if it, if it has to be physical. Here's Joe Donahue with a little bit of on-the-job instruction from Mark Naminski. We're looking at about five minutes and 40 seconds left in this first half. At the end of the first half, we're going to talk a bit to Joe Donahue and Coach Bob Riasso from Rutgers. Get their feelings on the play in this first half. Long throw. There's Wilson. Got past one, but not two. Glenn Carbonero with the long clear. And the wind continues to whip up here on the campus of Monmouth College in West Long Branch. We hope you're enjoying the action here in this MetLife Game of the Week. It's Monmouth 1 and Rutgers nothing. With five minutes to go in the half. Ball bounces around. They're trying to get some control. Aronson. Bleefeld couldn't catch up. Now Rutgers looks to counterattack. And tripping on the ball was Daryl Edelstein. So that'll slow the attack down momentarily. Give the Hawks a chance to get back and set up a bit, pack it in, which is exactly what they're doing. Mark Edelstein. Edelstein at the 18-yard line. Goes down, takes a dive, no foul. Tripping all over it. That could be a dangerous play. Yes, it is. Good call, Bobby. Good call. That's what he got. He cannot lock that ball down between his legs. He's got to be playing it. Edelstein trying to draw the, the penalty kick, tripping and stumbling, but 90% of an, uh, an act in that case, and he just just shielding it. And, of course, Edelstein a little unhappy also because he received a little shot in the posterior right at the uh, end of that play. That might be why he was upset. Well, that's the uh, technician, Bob Lampinen. It's, uh, it's hey, Chris, how you doing? One of the chances you take when you hold that ball down there between your legs or hold it on the ground, the ball is still live as far as the, the rest of the players on the team or, or in the field are concerned. You better explain that comment. Oh, <laughs> our monitor went out and technician Bob Lampin had just hit it and it started again. The usual uh, way, it's the way I start my car. Get out, give it a kick. Three minutes and 25 seconds to go. 
And we're gonna send my man, Dave Schofield, down to midfield to get all set for that quick interview with the coaches right at the close of the first half. So when the half is over, make sure you stay with us. Dave will be with Joe Donahue and Bob Riasso. 3.13 to go, one to nothing, Mammoth. And the ball's cut across, good header, but on the net into the arms of Zabilowitz. Well up was number five, Chris Brockley. But Zabilowitz with another save. Seven saves for Zabilowitz. Nine shots for Rutgers. And things starting to stretch out. The midfield not quite as congested as it has been for throughout most of the half. Sacco turns. Naminski. And again, Rutgers comes out of their own end. And the foot race is on. And let's see, do they call it a tripping foul or a throw? They'll give a throw in to number 15, Bob Olat, for Monmouth. 2.10 to go in the half. Demorat. And that's Esposito with the little bump, and that'll be a foul against Rutgers. Wilson. Check that. Sacco goes down. So 140 left. And Zabilowitz now, that was actually Dave Pellin who got knocked down by Esposito. So Zabilowitz with a nice punt just past midfield. Sharkey. Rutgers coaching staff screaming wide, wide, but it's pretty tough to go wide if your players don't want to go out there on those sidelines to use the width. Rutgers getting a little impatient, starting to crowd the middle. This one flighted in. Russo with a header. And just cleared by number two, Dave Pellin. Zabilowitz hesitated on the line, and Pellin had to make the clear. Under a minute, 45 seconds to go. Number 13, Chris Sharkey will take the throw. Long throw in the box. Knocked straight down. And that's gonna be a corner kick for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. They'll have to hustle to get it off with 24 seconds to go, but they'll do it. Here it comes. Again, it's down in front, and this time it was cleared up by Olat. And that should do it, six seconds to go. Zabilowitz will just hold on. Two, one. And there's the horn ending the first half. A good first half, particularly for the Monmouth Hawks, as they lead it by the score of one to nothing. Rutgers in control throughout most of the half, but unable to dent the nets, and they trail it by one and Bob Riasso is going to have to talk to his troops and see if he can get things organized with a nice crowd on hand here at Monmouth College. Joe Donahue and his staff and players doing a real nice job in promoting their sport, trying to build some interest on campus, and it looks like it's starting to pay off as you get a look at the people right there. As we mentioned, Rutgers with a record of 1-0. and They're ranked 17th in the United States. Monmouth at 0-0-1-1, a 0-0 tie with Lehigh to open their season up. Rutgers defeated the University of Maine three to nothing, and I guess the story in that half is that Mammoth did a good job shutting down the Rutgers scores. Let's go to Dave Schofield right now. This is Dave Schofield with Mammoth coach Joe Donahue. Joe, you're up one nil over Rutgers. You've got to be pretty happy with the score. Well, yeah, so far, Dave, we are. Uh, of course, we're fortunate to be up one zero. Uh, we've been outplayed most of the half in terms of shots on goal. Uh, I'm a little bit uh, concerned about our disorganization in the back, especially coming out of the back. We're going to try to uh, sort that out at halftime, hopefully have a little better result in the second half. Joe, thank you very much. Good luck the rest of the way. Okay, you're welcome, Dave. Thank you. This is Dave Schofield. We're going back to Bob Lampinen. Today's Monmouth Rutgers soccer match. Okay, thanks a lot, Dave. <laughs> That's not me there. 
But uh, what can I tell you? Dave Schofield talking very briefly to Joe Donahue. And at this point, Joe just wants to get down and talk to his troops, his team ahead, one to nothing. And there's 45 minutes of soccer to go. And I think Joe's team would like at least one more and make it two to nothing and be a little more comfortable. of one to nothing as we take a look at a, an excellent crowd on hand and let's take a look at the scoring summary and there it is right there Rutgers leading it one to nothing Len Turry scoring the goal 748 of the match assisted by Dave Pellin and you can see the statistics right there 14 to 3 in shots Rutgers holding the advantage but Mammoth with the one goal edge so as you mentioned Dave the ball seemed to have been bouncing Nicely for Joe Donahue and the Monmouth Hawks in the first half. Yeah, telling statistic there, Monmouth has three shots on goals. They did not have a shot after they scored their goal. And there's the one that counted. Let's take a look at the goal once again. Ball is flighted into the area. It bounces around a little bit. Davey Pelling gets a little bit of a foot on the ball. Len Turry, ever opportunistic, just bangs it home for Monmouth. 1-0 is the score. No shot since that goal. I think Monmouth has to start coming out here and, and realistically put the ball up into the wings and try and get a little offense going, Bob. Uh, that's very true. And that's number eight right there, the man who scored the goal, Len Turry, on the Monmouth bench, preparing to start things off here in the second half. The wind continuing to whip through the Monmouth College campus here. And uh, not too much of a factor in that first half, I didn't think, Dave. I think late, late in the half it became more of a factor as the... The guys got a little tired and the ball was up in the air a little more. We've got two skilled teams here, Bob. They're going to keep the ball down on the floor. They're going to knock it around a little bit. Uh, the wind should not be a factor in a game this, of this kind. Um, there's Joe Donahue and there's Bob Riasso. Bob can't be very happy. Joe's got to be happy. Uh, you got another 45 minutes to go. You know the strength of a Rutgers. You know what they can do. So this game is far from over. Well, I think uh, Bob Riasso obviously unhappy about the first half. He, uh, We had expected to get him for a minute right at the end of the half for a, for a very quick interview with you. And I think he, he forgot all about it and just took off, wanted to lay into his team a little bit about, the, about their play in the first half. <laughs> well, you've coached, Bob. You know how that is. You come into a game, you fully expect to win. You're down 1-0 at halftime. You've got a lot of things you want to say, some of them very forcefully. Yes. Uh, it's, it's easy to forget little things. And once again, having some problems with our monitor, I'll start whacking it again, see if we can get it to come back on. There it is. There Good it job, is. Bob. Well, we can't see the assistant anymore, but we do see the two teams on the field ready to start play here in the second half. Rutgers assistants, Paul Blodgett, Bob McNulty, Jack Mulder, Jack Weber, and Dave Mazur. Rather large staff. There are some of the coaches right there. Bob Riazzo right in the middle, Bob McNulty on the right. Bob McNulty, of course, former Jersey City State Long-time head coach, uh, American Soccer League coach, uh, Channel 9, New York Cosmo color commentator for a couple of seasons. So Bob Riasso has assembled quite a staff. Known to us as Bullet Bob McNulty. Bullet Bob McNulty, right. One of my, one of my teachers when I went to the coaching school many moons ago. Well, this is a real interesting game, Bob. We'll have you tell us about that some. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we do know that the score is one to nothing, and the second half is just a, has just gotten underway. And Rutgers trailing it right now. <laughs> and here comes DeMorat. Releases to number six, Jim DeMarco. And turned. And we'll set the keepers for you. Mark Zabilowitz in the nets for Monmouth and Joe DeMorat for Rutgers. Both keepers have done a nice job. Zabilowitz on the left. We couldn't really see it. Our monitor is out again. And long throw in. And that's going to be a trip inside the box. Well, I'll tell you, that's a long throw that they have taken by uh, Chris Sharkey. He can really fire it. And, and, and we say the wind's not a factor, but that throw was into what wind we have blown across the field. And that was, that was a good one. A so, bit of a 
a little bit of a foul inside the area. The Hawks will take the, have the ball here. Mark Zabilla is getting ready to punt from left to right on your TV screen. It's that one long. That's the one they like to free Wilson on. If you get him running onto a ball like that, he's, he's just so quick. But that time, Joe Demorat off the line. A little more space in the midfield than the beginning of the match. Looks like Rutgers' plan is to spread it out, be a little more patient, try and work the ball wide, whereas the Hawks, again, look to be a little more offensive-minded in this half, as we said they had to be. Well, Bob Olat just committed that foul at midfield. Carbonara. And I'm sure Rutgers is going to want to try to play the ball on the ground, try to withdraw some of those defenders, open some space up before they knock it. You can see it. they're going to be a little more patient defensively. Then they go long and a nice clear. That was Nick Sacco back there, Bob. Cleared it nicely one time. Brad Bleefeld charging into the back of Chris Sharkey. Dropped his shoulder. And that one goes over the sideline. It'll be a throw in. And a foul against number 13 of Rutgers, Chris Sharkey. Called for an elbow violation. So Paul Halleck will take the free kick. The wind blowing across the field. And if it continues like that, the ball will be over on this near side throughout most of the second half. That's an offside. The Rutgers defender stepped up as soon as uh, Halleck approached the ball, kind of freezing either Soccer or Wilson there, or maybe both of them offsides. That's Paul Halleck. You just had a look at number four, who took the free kick. This is Joe Demora, the goalkeeper for Rutgers. In the three to nothing victory over the University of Maine, Demorat picked up his 10th career save, and Bobby Joe Esposito scored goals 36 and 37 of his career. There's Demorat right there. And another throw for the Hawks. It was played back to DeMarat by Javier Velazquez from Kearney, New Jersey. And again, good defense by Mammoth as it was cleared out by Dave Pellin. Rutgers is, is spreading things out. They're spreading things out more this half, which is, is forcing Mammoth to spread their deep backs out a little more and opening up the middle for these, these backs and midfielders who'd love to run through. So yeah, I think you can, you can count on some of that coming up when uh, Rutgers gets the ball in deep. Oh, almost knocked in off the throw in. So Rutgers having some bad luck so far this afternoon. They've had some good opportunities. The Billowitz came up big two or three times in the opening half. Mamas one goal scored by Len Terry on a corner kick. And that was an unusual situation because Mammoth had just missed a penalty kick. It came off the keeper, or off the bar, actually, was cleared over the top. The Mammoth came right back and scored on the corner. Nick Sacco just wasted a beautiful move in the midfield there by trying to push the ball into the middle. There was nobody home, and he had Brad Bleedfell wide on the right side, on his right side. You can see what we're talking about in the first half. They don't want to let Edelstein turn, but that time he got the turn as he made the move past number 19, Niaminski. And now there's a tripping foul called against the Monmouth Hawks. 38-53 left in the match. You can see they really want to go wide. Now they flight it into the box. Zabilowicz, though, gathers it in. Good concentration, nice, soft hands. For his size, he, he isn't exceptionally tall like a Joe DeMorit. But there, Mark Zabilowicz there is, is an exceptional goalkeeper in the air for his size. For anybody's size, actually, but he's exceptional in the air. And it's that concentration you were mentioning, Bob. Russo with good marking against Esposito. And 
And that'll be a Rutgers throw. And once again, they'll send Sharkey. So it looks like Bob Riasso and the Rutgers Knights are gonna go with the long throw anytime they get down close. Look at that. It's like a corner kick down there, Bob. Every time they get deep, it's like a corner kick. Corner kick only you can almost place it where That's you it. want to put exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. It's much much more certain. And that time it was a foul against Mammoth, so it'll be a free kick. Edelstein. And Aronson way up to clear that one away. Isaacson. Brought down by Sacco. He'll turn. And they play it, try to play it back to Zabilowicz, and he gets to it, I guess, but yes, he did. He got to it before it went over the end line. Now Mammoth trying to slow it down. I'm not sure, uh, Dave, whether Mammoth really can play the real slow-paced game with Rutgers. I don't think they're quite skilled enough to do it. And I don't think they can play the spread-out game like that either, Bob. I think they, their strength in the first half was in, in that they were, were clutching and grabbing and, and, and clawing at everything they could get. I, I think they need that high-paced game. Yeah, the, there's Joe Donahue right there on the sideline for the Hawks. Oh, Sacco was open. He got inside of the defender number six, DeMarco, and just couldn't get a head or a foot on it. Much more dangerous than uh, you can than the reaction of the players. Actually, they didn't look like they were too concerned with it. That was dangerous. Very dangerous. Nick Sacco is a well-skilled player. The ball was in there a little bit, little bit more goal side, and that might have resulted in a goal for the Hawks. And now Mammoth will try to get out of their own end. Good pressure defense, and that'll be a throw in for the Hawks. And another throw for Mama. So now the ball up in the air and throw in starting to mount up. In the first half, Rutgers enjoyed a 5 to 2 lead on corner kicks. 14 to 3 in shots. Dominated, but still trail 1 0. I think what Joe said at halftime is very true. Rutgers dominated. They just have not put the ball in the net. Ozeroski. It's a Sharky. And Mammoth with an injured player. That's number seven, Brad Bleefeld, but he limps away. Type of sport where you get a lot of knocks that hurt for about a minute or two, and then they're okay. You, you play the whole game, you wake up the next morning, and they hurt once again. Yeah, Brad Bleefeld here is a late uh, replacement for Todd Tufalo as an injured leg. And uh, Bleefeld, as I said, red-shirted last year. He's back in the fold this year and, and playing excellent soccer. Really doing a good job for Joe Donahue and the Hawks here. Look at the work on that side of the field by Edelstein. And earns a corner for his team. As the substitution horn goes off right in our microphone. I think they plan that sometimes. <laughs> and I don't think anyone went onto the field. Well, it's, it's, a, uh, it's, a it's a penalty kick here. It's a direct kick that's why no one okay. was let on free kick not a penalty kick now come on Dave don't confuse me free kick result of a penalty that's better Wilson overlapping is Bleefeld right side here he comes a long run tried to heal it back and gave it away it's a great idea it just didn't work Carbonara comes away with it and now they're starting to spread it out Sacco Nice ball, Bleefeld. Staying wide. Isaacson comes away. Nice ball. Sharkey on the run. Sharkey with some room. And a good tackle. Coming up to make the tackle was number 15, Bob Olat. Mammoth defending with all 11 players. Mammoth's strengths today, Bob, I think lies in their tackling and their aggressive play deep uh, and in the middle third of the field. Yeah, 
Sharkey shoulder to shoulder with Halleck. Nice move, Halleck with a good tackle. Now here come those substitutions. In for Mammoth, number 22, Greg Bajak. And you can see the count one to nothing. Corner kick coming up for Rutgers University. And again, they clear it away momentarily anyway. Shot in the net, nice shot, tough shot. Tough shot, tough Ball angle. came down and it was hammered. And I believe it was number 14, Mark Ozerowski, who hit it. Ozerowski didn't waste any time. The, the second the ball hit the ground, bang, it was there. Nothing Zabilowicz could do about that. We're tied at one. I think Mark was a little worried about that ball up in the air, wanted to try and, try and do something about that. The shot was taken so quickly and so perfectly, Bob, that there was really, he, he was helpless. Here comes the replay on that. The ball is flighted. Headed back out toward the corner kicker. He heads it right back in. The ball's hit up in the air by a Mammoth defender. It comes down. Ozerowski just turns and bangs it to the far post, knocks it off the post and in. Ties this game up for the Scarlet Knights at one. So 1-1 one, one the count and you almost get the feeling that it was a matter of time before it had to happen. The finger's been on the trigger for a while. It just hadn't gone off. And that'll be a, I think the linesman was pointing for a Rutgers throw in, but they're gonna let Mammoth take it. They bring it back, start it again. This is Sacco in the box. Aronson got the shot off, but couldn't quite turn. Rutgers with the goal kick. Very skillful move by Nicky Sacco there. He shielded the ball well, saw Rusty Aronson in the middle of the area, turned it over to him. Rusty stopped it. A difficult turn shot there, hit it just high and wide. Well executed both ways. Number 20 into the match as you take a look at the man who will take the goal kick. That's number six, DeMarco. But number 20, John Mitchell just checked in for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Mitchell replaced Peter Vermes. Vermes had been quiet. There's Esposito. Esposito still with it. Still with it. And cleared away. Halleck there. Rutgers now starting to swarm the net. They've tied at 1-1. It's been a frustrating afternoon thus far for the Knights. They spread that ball out, Bob. It and they're getting more offensive movement from all of their players, not just the forwards, but all of them. Got guys making through runs and, and things are gonna open up for them. Well, defenders moving up a little more onto the attack and as you mentioned, they are spreading it out wider as Zabilowicz goes up in the air to snare it. I think that's the difference in the second half. It's a slower paced Rutgers team and yet they're using more of the field. They're, they're doing it in maybe four passes instead of two, which they were doing in the first half. Comes Mammoth now. Aronson. Aronson still with it. Gets tangled up with Isaacson. And let's see, what do we have? It's going to go against the Mammoth Hawks. And Rutgers will get the free kick. I'm not sure whether they had a, a, a dangerous play or a pushing foul. Here we got a, a ho hooking, we'll call it. Uh, Aronson hooking, tied yeah. his legs up into the uh, Rutgers player. And Carbonera. And that one goes into touch, so the Hawks will have the throw in with 29 minutes and 28 seconds remaining. It's the MetLife College Soccer Match of the Week right here on TV 34, and a good one indeed it's been. Here comes Sacco, he's got good speed, breaks through one tackle, but Tyler Isaacson helping out, knocks it away. Each week, uh, the MetLife Insurance Company, Metropolitan Life, that is, selects or highlights a game of the week. They call it the MetLife Game of the Week. 
and we just happen to be televising this one on our schedule. We got lucky to, to get the MetLife Game of the Week, but we're enjoying it, and so far, uh, both teams are showing that they've got some quality players, and I think it's going to be a good season for that man, Bob Riasso, right there, along with Joe Donahue, the head man at Monmouth. Both teams will be successful this season. Yeah, Joe Joe has uh, emphasized that his, his, uh, his team is looking to the ECAC Metro Conference season, which opens up Saturday against Marist College. How about that throw? Went over everybody. Gracious. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you, George Sharkey can certainly throw the ball. And you were saying about Joe's team pointing to the conference. That's important because uh, NCAA automatic bid if he w who would to whatever team wins that ECAC Metro Conference tournament That's or right. championship. That's right, Bob. It's first year for that too, uh, for, the, for that for that particular conference. So it'll do them well to do well in the conference. And then uh, I don't know if they have a tournament. I think it's just whoever wins the conference. Well, number 22, uh, Bajek lost a shoe in that little melee at midfield. Shoeless Greg Bajek out there. And Rutgers, they don't even uh, have enough courtesy to wait until he gets it back on. They just keep on playing. Bob, what would you do if one of your teams waited? <laughs> There'd be some trouble. You guys sometimes didn't wait for us to get on the field before you started scoring goals, I remember. Of course, years ago, Dave. <laughs> assistant coach at St. Rose. I was an assistant at Neptune. We had some great battles and uh, we probably shouldn't get into some of the uh, inside jokes that we continue to remember. But we'll have an opportunity, I'm sure, during some of our high school matches to talk about the good old days, which starts tomorrow night, by the way. If you're watching this on Sunday, it'll be Neptune and Wall. And if this is the Wednesday replay, stay with us. That'll be right after this one. Dave Schofield will be with us all year on high school soccer. And on the uh, on the Wall Festival game, I will not be with you, Bob. Joe Dunahee will be up here to lend his expertise, and I will be. Uh, I have a previous engagement. <laughs> First high school game of the year. Here I give you this big buildup. You're going to be with us all year. You're not going to make it. Uh, I'll tell you, John Fogarty concert. They tell <laughs> me is that true? This is true. Well, Centerfield's a good song. I'd go to. Yeah. Nice album. I have three, Tape, three other tickets that are going to get, get used whether I go or not. <laughs> okay, Rutgers looking for goal number two. Nice overlapping run by Esposito. Gives it back to Edelstein. But again, releasing to knock it away was John Russo. John Russo playing a solid game in the defense. More mature this year, Bob. He's a pleasure to watch. He's really come into his own as a, as a defender. And the play has really opened up for both sides since Rutgers scored their equalizer. Edelstein cuts it back and up in the air knocking it away was John Mitchell actually was trying to put it on goal but he missed it a substitution on for Rutgers it's number five Chris Brockley Chris a midfielder from Pine Brook New Jersey and number seven in from Moffitt is Brad Bleefeld Twenty-five oh six left in the match. The score is one to one. Rutgers and Monmouth all tied up. And the Hawks with a free kick. Plenty of time remaining. Halleck runs right through it. You don't see Paul Halleck stop too often. You see, once he starts coming, he's going all the way. He's from the Wall High School so School of Soccer, and uh, if you can't go around it, you know, you don't go around it. You go through it. You can't get first to it. Well, Paul's, a, Paul's a whale of a player. What a tough, hard-nosed defender. That's number four for the Monmouth Hawks. Not to be confused with number six, who is Paul Hamadike, another tough, hard-nosed defender, but this one from Tom's River. Edelstein really causing some problems on that right side. Mark Edelstein, number four for Rutgers, has been breaking away down the right side two or three times, cut a couple of them back. There's Halleck right there who's played so well on the defense. And they're going to have to slow Edelstein down. Eventually something's going to happen off of those passes he's been making. And 
right back to Zabilowicz. Twenty-three thirty-five remaining. Intensity of the game has just calmed down a little bit the last couple of minutes. Uh, Rutgers was starting to almost panic, I think, starting to think that maybe they'd never get one. Now they tied it up, and they're going back to their original game plan, I think, which is a little slower-paced match. They almost made a mistake right there. Just almost made a horrible mistake there, giving up a corner kick on your own throw and with everybody in white shirts back. And Monmouth giving much more room to the defense. Low pressure, allowing the defenders to knock it around. But boy, I'll tell you, they mark it up tight once it gets inside the midfield area. The game has slowed down, Bob, as you mentioned. I think they're, they're just waiting for a, uh, for a final rush here with 22 minutes and 50 seconds left. And again, it's a free kick. This is Mark Edelstein, number four. And a Rutgers player is down. Looks like it might be number 13. Yes, it is. Chris Sharkey shaking up momentarily. There he is, Sharkey, the man with the long throw in. Monmouth with the defensive wall kind of thing that you practice so often offensively. Got to make something happen. Good opportunity. They go right at the wall. The wall does its job. And they call a foul against Rutgers. So nothing happened. A good opportunity for the Scarlet Knights. They went right at the wall, and the wall held its ground, and Mammoth remains tied 1-1 with 21 minutes and 40 seconds remaining. An obstruction the call. Again, it goes to Monmouth. In case any of our viewers are wondering, Bob, if this game should result in a tie after regulation time, we go to two 10-minute overtime periods. If the game is still tied after that, it goes in the books as a draw. All right, well, Monmouth Lehigh, an example of that. 0-0, zero, zero, they played the 90-minute regulation. The two overtimes and Still nobody could score, and they went home. Long trip, not to score any goals. Bobby Joe Esposito trying to operate, taken away, in the, and there's the foul. It was called. People really screaming and hollering from the sideline at the official. Kind of match where there's so much contact, they are grabbing at each other. You know, depending on which team you're rooting for, you see it your way. The official at halftime, Bob, I had the opportunity to speak with him, and he mentioned that he was uh, he was impressed with the skill level and the way the boys were playing. He really didn't think that it was a rough game at all in the first time. It was physical, but not dirty. So. Uh, I, I agree with you. It's I been agree physical, I, but what I, it's not the kind of thing where guys are out chopping at each other, but they are grabbing and pulling, and you know they all know the tricks, how to grab the shirt and hold on to the pant leg and so forth. Seeking that advantage. That's right. Most of these players are excellent one-touch players, Bob. So that if they have to play the ball in one touch, they can do it and do it quite well. Joe Donahue on the left and assistant coach Jimmy Harrison on the right in the blue shirt. Joe has mentioned Jimmy Harrison has come up the uh, last couple of years and really helped Joe out. Uh, Jimmy, an excellent individual teacher of technique to players. And uh, Joe also assisted by Greg McConnell. There's Jim Harrison again. Jim from Kearney, New Jersey, former Hartwick player, played on a national championship team at Hartwick. And uh, as you said, Bob, a great teacher. And I, I know he had a nice summer. He uh, runs the soccer camps at the Atlanta Club in Walt Township. And uh, he's a good guy to learn, the particularly individual techniques. He's a patient instructor. He is. He had uh, very fortunate that many of the kids who play on my son's uh, club team went out to him. And I feel he helped them a great deal. So now we get into my son's club team, okay? I have a wallet full of pictures. You want to see them? <laughs> 1-1 one, one the score. 18 minutes and 55 seconds remaining. 
Watch out, though, because my son just started his club team first year, so you'll be hearing about that later on, too. <laughs> Welcome to the big time, folks. Yeah, right. Well, I'll tell you, some of the guys out here are not only physical, but they're quick and they're skilled, and the level of play just continues to improve. A number of the players we've actually followed up through uh, some of the club teams in the high schools. Only to take a guy like uh, Paul Halleck. We saw him develop, and he's the same type of player he always was. Only much, much better skill level, much stronger, much quicker. And you, you know, you can identify them when they're young. Who's going to be good when they get older? I, that, I believe that. That's very true. I, I had an opportunity firsthand to watch Mark Zabilowitz come up through the Belmar program. And uh, watch out here. Okay, I'm sorry. Always an exceptional player. From, from, from the time he was seven, eight years old right on through, you could tell Mark was going to be an exceptional player. There's Aronson, has it taken away. 17 minutes and 36 seconds remaining in the match. It's one to one. Rutgers and Monmouth, here comes number two, Carbonara. Mammoth playing primarily defensive soccer. Rutgers keeps pounding away. Mammoth can tend to get into a lot of trouble when they let the ball get deep into the corner like that, Bob. Uh, partially because it's very difficult to defend and partially because Rutgers is so good in a short game like that. Well, okay. there are two Mammoth players down on the field right now as they stop play momentarily. Bob Riasso on the Rutgers bench. And both teams will come over, and particularly the Rutgers team, try to take a shot at the water. There's the count, 1-1 one, one with 17.04 remaining. If uh, neither of these teams scores in the next seven minutes, you're going to see a 10-minute war out here, Bob. That's Dave Pellin for the Monmouth Hawks shaking up. Looks like his left ankle. And the game, as you mentioned, uh, has been physical, not dirty, but both teams con contesting every loose ball. I don't feel with Davey Palland is uh, Mama's new athletic trainer, Jim Murdoch. He's brand new to the school this year, took over for um, good Davey taught her in school. I can't remember her name. Oh. Terry yeah, McHugh. Terry McHugh, that's right. I taught her in school. I can't remember her name. It's Terry McHugh Bordiak now, married to Greg Bordiak, the women's cross-country coach here at Monmouth College. Okay, well, Pellin was taken off the field. That's Riasso on the bench. Bob Riasso, I think he's settled down a little bit since Rutgers equalized it here. I think the entire team has, Bob. They're a little more confident about what they can do. They're spreading it out. They're playing much, uh, much more patient, calm brand of soccer, which is really what they should play. They're a well-skilled bunch. Look at the crowd here. Good crowd for this first college match of the season here at Mama. And they're seeing a good one. It's one to one. Our opening soccer match of the year tomorrow night. It'll be the Neptune Scarlet Flyers taking on the Wall Crimson Knights in high school soccer. If you're watching this on Wednesday on a replay, of course, that one immediately following this one. So we kick off uh, the college season with a great one, Monmouth and Rutgers, and of course the high school season with that big traditional match between Neptune and Wall. There have been some good ones over the years, haven't there, Bob? Yeah, sure have. And I think they've got things squared away on the field, so finally the referee, Ken Andrus, blows his whistle. We're underway with 17 minutes left in this one. In regulation, that is. Two 10-minute overtimes. If it remains tied at the end of that, it's call the tie. They'll pack it up and go home. starting to slow down. I think both teams getting a little tired, but Riasso and Donahue, both coaches who are real proponents of fitness. I know that they put the players uh, through some pretty good fitness training, and they're in pretty good shape, particularly for early in the season. Very good shape. Uh, Nicky Sacco fouled there. He had a sandwich job between two Scarlet Knights. Oh, nice move there by number five, Brockley. And Sacco pokes it away. 
Sacco gets back well. There's Halleck straight ahead. Sharkey chased by Aronson. And Rutgers now with some uh, good control soccer. Again, Halleck. Well, white trips this way, they say. That's number five, Chris Brockley, who was taken down. So it'll be a free kick for the Knights. Well up. Oh, great goal. Tremendous goal. Textbook goal, Bob. Came off of the free kick. Again, restarts. And I'll tell you, I'm not sure the, the number of the, the gentleman who just scored that goal, but he got up in the air. And I think that might have been Sharky, Bob, but he got well up for that one. The, the, the free kick was nicely taken, and the goal scorer was well in the air for that one. Let's take a look at it again on the replay. The free kick over there, well up over the defender, hit it with the, hit it solid right into the far post, a, a textbook goal. So uh, Monmouth now trailing it two to one. They had played so well. We're going to take look one more look at that thing one more time. It. We'll see if we can get a number for you. Here the, the, the kick is taken by Rutgers, flighted into the right-hand side of the area. Up in the air, over two defenders. He heads it toward the far post and inside the post. Nothing Zabilowicz could do on that. Uh, a perfect goal for Rutgers. And there he is. Number 26 was the goal scorer, Benny, Benny Letson. Letson. Oh, we mentioned uh, Letson earlier out of East Brunswick High School, one of the premier players in high school soccer last year, and uh, you can see why. That was just beautiful. And you don't see too many American boys up in the air heading the ball like that. It, well, uh, the free kick well taken, the, the restart well taken, laid it right in an area that Letson knew it was coming to. Letson got well up in the air over the defenders. He outfought him for the ball, knew where he was going all the time. He was never in doubt. Score now 2-1 Rutgers with 15 minutes and 25 seconds left. Bob, I think this might change the face of the game as well. Well, what happened was the Rutgers team had walked off of the field because the trainer was out for Monmouth taking a look at uh, one of the Monmouth players. And as the trainer and the Monmouth player were walking off the field, Monmouth decided to try to get the ball started a little ahead of time. <laughs> Take any edge you can get, but you have to wait till the injured player and the trainer get off. Sometimes the magic works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> Joe Donahue actually was on the field. You saw him walking off the field, giving directions. Look at him. He knows he, he got caught with his hand in a cookie jar there. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that. Eleven Rutgers guys from the sideline went tearing back out there. You pull that one off and you're the smartest man in the world. Well, let's see if the Rutgers tactics change at all now as they lead it by the score of two to one. I look for the Rutgers midfielders to stay at home a little more now, Bob. Uh, their backs will stay at home. They'll, they've, got, they've got 14 and a half minutes here to, to play it out with a 2-1 lead. I look, them, look for them to stay home a little more and I look for Mama to attack full force. Whether you lose by two goals, one goal, it makes no difference. Never even jumped. Yeah, just the and it goes into touch. It'll be a hawk throw in. Number 16 for Rutgers. That's Daryl Edelstein. And there you go up the line. That's number 12. Mike LaMatina, he's being marked by number two, Carbonara. And they're gonna call a push. And it'll be a free kick. LaMatina. Almost needs one. Here comes a good opportunity on the restart. Line drive, it goes through. And nobody there, but well taken by LaMatina. Well taken, just missed Hammadike's head, and it landed right on Nicky Sacco's foot. I don't think he was ready for it, 
He ran right over the top of it, and he had a shot if it was ready. So we've got 13-10 to go in this one, and Mammoth battling back a good opportunity, and La Matina took the free kick well, but Sacco couldn't put it away. Rutgers now looking for a little insurance as they're ahead by a one. That was number 26 on the breakaway, Benny Letson. Letson scored goal number two for the Scarlet Knights. You know, uh, Dave, number four, Mark Edelstein in the midfield for Rutgers has really played some ball game. He's a workhorse, and, and every team needs somebody like that, an unselfish player that's going to make sure the ball gets up, up to the attacking third of the field, and maybe put it in some, on somebody else's foot and let them score the goal. But Edelstein is just a tireless worker. And how about that dance by Esposito as he wove his way between about four or five Monmouth defenders, almost got the shot off and finally earned a corner kick for his team. So the Knights with the corner. Far post. Anytime it bounces, it's dangerous. And Rutgers wants a foul. They think the number seven, Bleefeld, pulled down the Rutgers player, but no call by the referee. Aronson steps over. Oh, nice ball, Wilson, but covered up nicely by DeMarco. Jim DeMarco, number six from Hicksville, New York, cleared that one away. 11.34 left. Brad Bleefeld is down there uh, on that last tackle. I think he got uh, cramp or kicked in the leg or something, Bob, but he's down in front of his own goal. Uh, Well, they were screaming that Bleefeld had actually taken down a Rutgers player. Bleefeld had an unusual angle on the defensive play and kind of hooked one of the Rutgers guys, and he twisted something up pretty good. In the referee's opinion, though, I think he got the ball, and the Rutgers player just fell over him going for it himself. Another stoppage in action here, Bob. Had a lot of this today. And the clock shows 11:29 uh, as you look at the crowd. It has been a, a long afternoon of soccer here at Rutgers, and, or excuse me, here at Monmouth. Rutgers leading it two to one. Last year, the two teams played up at the athletic complex on the campus of Rutgers, and Rutgers came away with the victory there. A, a beautiful complex up there too, Bob. And there's Bleefeld, he's gonna shake it up. Looks like he'll be all right. Uh, speaking of the complex up at Rutgers on September the 19th, Check that the 16th, Tuesday night the 16th, 10th rank Penn State will be in, a, in to play the Rutgers team at 7.30. That's at Rutgers University on September the 16th. So take the trip up to New Brunswick. It's a great complex to see some good soccer. 10th rank, rank Penn State with uh, former St. Rose player Bill Brennan playing up there. That's right. I saw Billy a couple times this summer working out on the Nautilus equipment. He'd had some knee problems. But uh, you talk about getting big and strong. It's happened to Billy Brennan. Yeah, he's uh, apparently healthy again, Bob. I think he'll be up there. I'd like to get up there and see that match myself. So 10 minutes and 45 seconds to go. Mammoth needs one to tie it. They went into the lead one to nothing at 7.48 of the match as Len Turry knocked in a corner kick with an assist from Dave Pellin. And Monmouth struggled to hold on to the lead until finally at 57-57 of the match, Ostrowski, Marcus Ozerowski, that is, for Rutgers, made it 1-1, and then Benny Letson put him ahead 2-1, and that's where we stand with 10 minutes and 15 seconds to go. Mama takes on Stevens Institute on the 17th of September here at home. That'll be a three o'clock start Wednesday afternoon, the 17th. And once again, Edelstein. I'll tell you, he's been working hard. Nice ball and cleared away again. Mama's defense really doing a good job. They've given up two goals, but they've been under really relentless pressure all day. And particularly the second goal by Le how much you could do about it. It was a, a brilliant header. And the first one by Ozerowski, the ball came down a bang far corner before anyone knew what hit him. Yeah. 
similar type game to the match played last year. Here comes Esposito. Bobby Joe Esposito looking for some space. He hits the near post in the near side of the netting. It's an unfortunate mistake, uh, for, not a mistake, but a uh, bad bounce there for Paul Halleck. He uh, coming up onto the ball and it just hit funny and bounced up over his foot. Esposito, ever the opportunist, was there to pick it up. Bajek back into the match for Monmouth. Now let's take one more look at Bobby There's, Joe Esposito in action. There's Bobby Joe, always in control. He fell to the ground, kept, kept his balance, took that shot nicely, took it a little wide, but uh, Bobby Joe Esposito, number nine there for Rutgers, always in control. Wonderful skills. Talked about it in the first half, but he's got those quick feet, real quick little short steps. Uh, you know, accelerates tremendously, and he's got that body lean. He leans one way, goes the other way. A good example for young players, too. He never lets the ball get too far in front of him. Always keeps it nice and close to his feet, so he controls the action of the ball. And there's uh, Mark Wilson. Spoke about him in the beginning of this match, and Wilson's been quiet, really. They've done a good job on him. His strength is running onto a ball, and they haven't been able to free him up. Although they did free him up once in the first half and they got a penalty kick out of it. So Wilson, you know, is dangerous. They just have to be able to get them, get him the ball a little more often. He's, he's been marked very well today, though. Plus, he was shaken up early. Injured that ankle. Concentrate. Try to concentrate. Eight minutes to go, Bob. Eight minutes for Rutgers, uh, for, Ru for Monmouth to get something started here and try and uh, knock this game up again. And now it's Russo being taken down. Command Tour made the tackle and the foul. Carbonara, good marking also throughout the match. Rucker's spreading out well now, Bob. Yes, they are. That's Tyler Isaacson, right side. Edelstein. Edelstein and Sacco have had some confrontation. Good ball. Great ball, as a matter of fact. It actually tucks into the far corner. I don't know how he did it from our angle. It looked to me like it was going to go a little wide, but it, it went a little in. <laughs> so it's three to one, and that about locks it up for Rutgers. Mark Edelstein all the way down the right side, past Sacco, tucked it into the far corner. I don't know how he did that. He's we'll got try some to deceptive watch. speed, too, Bob. We're going to try to watch the end of that one. So, Edelstein did all the work. Not real pretty, but it counted, and it's 3-1. to one. Looked almost like a simple little crossing pass, didn't it, Bob? Just found its way into the net. Take your time. Mark, Mark. Scores Rutgers three, Monmouth one, with six minutes and 49 seconds left here in the second half of play. It'll be a restart now for Rutgers. It'll be taken by number three, Mark Commodore. Make that number 13, Chris Sharkey. Chris Sharkey, the man with the long throw in. Uh, Commander Tour takes it. That was right the first time. That's right. <laughs> a little deception there. And, but Commander Tour rolled it into the hands of Zabilowitz. Rutgers winning the match last year between these two teams by the score of three to one. Get in the box, Chrissy! And a similar game as we started to say earlier, as that one knocked way up into the trees. I think the difference, Dave, is that last year, Monmouth, there was no way they could even attempt to play the ball skill-wise with the Rutgers team. This year, they're a little more composed. Uh, they moved the ball around, a little more deliberation on their passes and all, and I think Monmouth is an improved team. A much improved, Bob. If there's any such thing, this was a much better 3-1 three, three deficit Woo. than uh, almost 4-1 deficit than, uh, than last year's. Number 14, Mark Ozerowski hit that one. There he is, Ozerowski. Obviously a great shooter. He scored the first goal for Rutgers. Rutgers seems to have no weak links in their in their uh, team here, Bob. Everybody can play the game. Everybody can shoot. Everybody can run. 
Everybody can defend. Well, Bob Riasso has really done a great job in bringing this program to national prominence where it belongs for years and years and years. Rutgers was down and uh, all the top players in New Jersey were going elsewhere. And really, this what Riasso has done is exactly what Coach Dick Anderson at Rutgers on their football team would like to do, keep the New Jersey kids at home. They're getting a great deal of support from the university uh, in terms of not just dollars, but in terms of, of actual uh, facilities, and facilities and everything to support right. from, uh, from the people involved. And the state is starting to support them. They call themselves the State University of New Jersey. And that's what they're pushing. Well, I know last year on the soccer team, they had good crowds. Uh, they were filling up their stadium. And they've got a beautiful AstroTurf or artificial surface there with outstanding lighting at Rutgers. Hey, good lighting, uh, seats for plenty of people to watch the game. They have the bubble there they can practice in in inclement weather. And it pays its dividends as Riasso and the, his staff, Paul Blodgett, Bob McNulty, Jack Mulder, Jack Weber, and Dave Mazur have built a team that's currently ranked number 17 in the United States. Uh, we should mention former Rutgers All-American Dave Mazur. That's right. Out of Columbia High School up in Maplewood. Lamatina with the throw. Three to one the score now. Wilson trying to break inside but taken away by Carbonara. And Carbonara clears it upfield. Halleck and number two, Helen, caught too close to each other, and Rutgers tries to take advantage of it. Commanda Tour played it out wide. And Rutgers will have the soccer ball with three minutes and 15 seconds remaining. Another dangerous restart here for Rutgers. Paul Halleck right there, a little frustrated, I think, starting to... Uh, become a little overly physical after the ball's knocked away. And again, they clear it upfield. This is Wilson. You can see the quickness now. If he can shield it, Carbonara steps in, takes it away. Nice step over move. Well done by Defender, Glenn Carbonara. Glenn Carbonara, defender who, when he was in high school, was one of the state's leading scorers, Bob. Carbonara from Vineland High School. And some words starting to be exchanged between some of the players. That's number two for mom with Dave Pellin. Pellin, a hard-nosed defender. Game is getting a little bit ragged here, Bob, in the final two minutes. And they're going to hold the clock, and I believe that the referee is going to pull the ball back and telling them that to knock it off, stop the delay of game. And the clock has been started once again. It shows a minute and 35. O'Donnell goes over it. Martina with the left-footed drive. Deflected. That'll be a corner. 135 to go. Monmouth would love to pull one goal back from this, I think, Bob. Uh, give them a little bit of uh, authenticity as they start their conference season. Nicky Sacco will take this one. Minute 15 showing. And there's the corner. He fell with a little push, but no call. I think he ran over somebody's foot on that one, Bob. And it goes into touch. It'll be a throw in. Under a minute now, 55 seconds remaining in the match, so it looks like Rutgers has come back from the one to nothing deficit, and they'll win it most likely by the count of three to one. This may not help them move up in the national rankings, but you can see why they're there, Bob. Well-skilled, well-disciplined team. 
They get good goalkeeping. Yes, they do. Good defense. They're, they're just good all over the field. And Monmouth, not a bad side themselves. Not at all. They're going to do very well in their conference. A credit to Joe Dunning and the job he's done here, the recruiting he's done, the coaching he and his staff have done. They're going to, they're going to finish very, very well in that ECAC Metro. I'd like to see them win it this year. Ten seconds to go. First goal was scored by Len Turry to put Monmouth up one to nothing, 7.48 into the match. And then in the, it was all second half for Rutgers as they trailed a one to nothing at the half. There's the whistle ending it. And in the second half, they came out goals by Ozerowski, Letson, and Edelstein give Rutgers the victory by the count of three to one. Both coaches shake hands, Bob Riasso and Joe Donahue. Once again, uh, they are good friends, and the rivalry continues, and Joe continues to look for victory number one. Yeah, you'll see this game happen every year, and you'll see each year Monmouth improving, getting a little bit better, and uh, they'll have their day in the sun. They'll, they'll knock off Rutgers one of these years. Okay, well, that's it from Monmouth College. The final score, once again, as you look at our winning goalkeeper, Joe DeMora, it actually had an easy afternoon of it. The final score, Rutgers three, Monmouth one. For Dave Schofield, I'm Bob Lampin, and good night, everyone, and thanks for watching.